Wavy Way. Hear the difference. What up, y'all? This is your boy, Wavy Wayne. Today, I bring you another Wavy Way tip of the day. The tip today is to use Identify Beat to find your session's tempo. Finding your session's tempo is important for a bunch of reasons. One reason is that you can use Pro Tools Grid Mode, which is the most powerful editing mode that Pro Tools have, especially when you got your tempo locked into the session right. Flying hooks becomes easy. You can do stutter edits, chops. Everything that you do basically will be in time with your record, so find that tempo first. I like to use Identify Beat to find my tempo. Uh, other producers and engineers may use things like Mixed in Key or Tap the Tempo, or whatever the hell they use, and Call a Friend, whatever, you know. To me, Identify Beat works the best because I'm the fastest at it. I can find my tempo in under a minute, and whatever you fastest at, that's what you should do because we want to be as efficient as possible in the studio. There's about four easy steps to using Identify Beat. Let's check this out. Step one. Make at least a two bar selection starting with the drums. Always pick the drums because the transients in the drum are the tallest, the cleanest, and easiest to work with. As the song is playing, I'll use my arrow keys to make the selection. The down arrow to start the selection, the up arrow to end the selection, all while the song is playing. Here I go. It helps if you get into it, kind of nod your head a little bit, tap your feet if you need to. Dab on. Here we go. Down. Two, three, four. Two, two, three, four, and up. Cool. So now I got my two bar selection. Pretty rough, but it's there. All right. Step number two zoom in and refine your selection. As you zoom in, and I like to use the shortcuts of zoom in, of course, T to zoom in, R to zoom out. As you zoom in, you will notice that your selection is a little bit away from the transient where it needs to be close to. All right, so I'm going to actually change my edit mode up to slip mode. I'm gonna adjust my selection right up to the start of that transient. Then I'm gonna zoom in even more and make sure that I'm as accurate as possible and get to a zero crossing point. Now, the zero crossing point is where the actual waveform of the record, of the audio, meets that solid line that's cutting through it. Whenever you do your edits at a zero crossing point, you'll be sure that those are gonna be clean edits, they'll be free of clicks and pops, all right? To tighten up the end of my selection, I'm just gonna hit the right arrow to jump over there, and I'm gonna zoom out till I see the next transient come into view. And again, I'm just gonna extend my selection, holding shift with my selector tool, and then zoom in, and each level that I zoom in, I'll get a little more accurate and get all the way down the sample level to make sure that I'm on a zero crossing point. Step number three, enable loop playback and listen for a seamless loop. You can enable loop playback in a bunch of different ways. A couple of them would be to go up to the options menu, choose loop playback. You can also go over to the transport, control click and cycle through the play modes. You can hit number four on the numeric keypad. After you've enabled loop playback, Hit play, listen for a seamless loop. If your selection doesn't loop seamlessly, start steps one and two over. Go back to one of those steps. Cool, that sounds like a pretty seamless loop to me, so I'm gonna move on to the next step. Step number four is to go to the event menu and choose identify beat. But if you wanna be an editing Jedi, Hit Command I. Magic, baby. In the uh, Identify Beat window, I always enter the same values, all right, just to make it easy for myself. I enter the start location as bar one, and I enter my end location as bar three. Hit OK, and then in your tempo ruler, you'll see your tempo. Now, I enter bar one and bar three, even though we didn't start at bar one and bar three and end at bar three, because it's just a standard value. All I need to do is tell Pro Tools how long the selection is. By me telling Pro Tools that my selection is a two bar selection, starting at bar one, ending at bar three, they can take that information and calculate a tempo for me. Cool. So my tempo is right here in my tempo ruler, and it looks like it's 59.9953, okay? What I have to do is just round that up to the nearest whole number. I'm so close to 60 beats per minute that I can be pretty sure that's what the tempo is. To round this up, 
all I have to do is delete the bar B marker at the end of the selection. So this whole option and click on that bar B marker. And make sure you remember what the tempo is because you're going to have to enter it here. I'm going to double click on the song start marker and then enter my tempo 60 beats per minute. After I got the tempo, I switch over to grid mode and everything else is easy from there. Don't hesitate to take a couple minutes out before your session starts to tell your client, yo, let me find this tempo real quick and I guarantee you everything else is going to go smoothly. When you need to fly the chorus over or do stutter edits or chops or anything like that, you're going to be working like an editing Jedi. Again, that's the way. The wavy way. When I check my tempo, when I get it locked in, I like to check it by going over to the end of the song. I'm going to change my grid value over to one bar. And I go somewhere toward the end of the record here, the end of the beat, and I just make a little random two-bar selection. If I hit play and this selection loops seamlessly, that lets me know that my tempo is accurate. And I wait till I get toward the end of the record because even if I'm off by a little bit, um, it'll still sound right in the beginning. But the further and further the, uh, the record goes along, the tempo will start to drift further and further away from those bar beat markers. And then you will be able to tell pretty easily at the end of the song that the tempo is wrong. So I'm at the end of my tempo. I'm at the end of my session here. I'm going to go ahead and play this back. Cool. That sounds pretty good to me. Now I'm ready to go. I can do anything. I can maybe do a stutter edit. Let's see. Uh, right before this, that part comes in, maybe I'll go up to my uh, grid value selector and change over to, let's say, uh, eighth note. Select this first eighth note of this section. Copy it. I'm just using grid mode. I'm going to paste it right before itself and then paste it right before itself again and let's just hear what that little stutter sound like Ooh! boy i'm telling you you're gonna kill him with that you're gonna kill him with that you can do a little drop off maybe uh on this next part right before the chorus comes in which i'm assuming is the chorus of this b here i'll just go ahead and do a little drop right there a little quarter note drop. Everything perfectly in time. When you got your audio's tempo locked to the session, you can use grid mode. And that's Pro Tools' most powerful editing mode. You become an editing ninja. Your clients will love you. You'll be flying through your session. All right? Shout out to the Noisy Neighbors for providing this dope track for us to work on today. We at Gateway Digital Studios. I'm Wavy Wayne. Sauce on everything. That's the Wavy Way tip of the day. Be dope, y'all. The wavy way. Hear the difference.